Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing a start to finish afternoon milking shift. So the first thing that we do when we come here, before we even start working in the parlor, we come to our pack barn and we scrape the manure alleys in here. I'm gonna be scraping our milking pack manure alley. We do this once a day in the afternoon, chase the cows over onto the straw pack, turn those flip up gates, grab the skid steer, and then we have the slot at the back there that ties into the other freestall barn. We do the other side of the barn once every couple days. That's because they're close-up cows. They eat nowhere near as much as a lactating cow, so there's also nowhere near as much manure in that alley. And we can get away with only doing that side once every few days. Alley's all opened up. And then it all gets pushed into that slot right there. Which goes into the pit, that's all the way in the sand room. Turn the pump on. And that's our manure pit. We're gonna take the milkers off the wash trays. I just heard our pre-milking sanitized washing cycle finish up. So before every milking that starts, there's a sanitized cycle that goes through all the milkers in the milk line here. And uh, that is just the last cycle, I believe. That one included, there's nine total cycles after a milking, so. We're gonna take the milkers off the wash trays. You can see they're nice and clean. Naleen just pressure washed everything in the parlor this morning, so. Get going. We've made our way into the freestall barn. We're gonna grab group one, bring them into the holding area. They're the ones that always get milked first. And this has always been our best rebuttal, I guess, against the uh, activists that say cows don't wanna be milked. They're all standing here waiting by the gate, staring at the holding area, and as soon as I open that gate, I don't gotta chase them. They're all gonna run for that holding area. Walking through with our rake and scraping any manure that we have in the beds. There's usually a little bit every 15 to 20 beds. It's kind of the sweet spot. You're always going to have a little bit. Most important thing when you're closing the holding area gate, two hands or a shoulder, cows can lean back into the gate. And if you just have one hand on there, you're kind of loose. It'll shoot back at you. If you're short, you can knock your teeth out. So always two hands. Slightly push on the cow a little bit, and hopefully she moves out of your way. Come on, girly. Of course the ladies don't mean to push the gate into your face. It's just the slightest little tap with their hip. 
they're so much bigger and stronger than we are, so you always gotta be careful around cows. All the cows from this group are in the holding area. My sister, Nolene, is milking them right now, so once again, we're gonna hop in that skid steer and scrape these alleys. is scraped, beds are raked, ready for the milked cows to come back in. Every time, man. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, buddy. Oh, this, this camera just got destroyed. So after we put the first couple of cows through the parlor, that's when we'll drop the holding area gate, the crowd gate. Just so that there's a bit more room in the holding area because it is pretty full when we first load the cows in there. And then I'll also bring it past this uh, concrete wall here. Our prep process here on the dairy farm is pretty simple. We just wipe the cow's teats with a towel. Once they're clean, we strip each teat a little bit, spray a little bit of milk on the ground, make sure it's good, make sure there's, looks like milk. Clean all four quarters, strip all four quarters. Nice and easy. This cow's spraying milk down already. She's ready to get milked. Spent the whole day working hard, 12 hours making milk. Now by the time we've cleaned this last cow, it's been about 60 seconds since I cleaned the first one on this side. And that is by design. Click up, six cows or six milkers go up. And we always want to wait 60 seconds after we clean them because cleaning the cow's udders does two things. Obviously it cleans them, make sure we got good clean milk but also it uh, sends a mental signal to the cow's brain to let that milk go. And uh, that's what we call the milk drop. And she'll just flow out a lot quicker, milk a lot quicker, if you give them 60 seconds in between cleaning. And hanging that milk around her. And now we'll do the next six. Same thing for them. Clean, strip, wait 60 seconds, hang them under. And of course, after we hang them under, the milkers will do the rest. They automatically come off. You guys have seen them come off on this side. While I've been hanging these ladies under. And that automatically applies the post dip iodine and then goes ahead and back flushes the milk claw after. Cool, now by the time we've hung under this side in the parlor, this side is usually done being milked. And then we can let them go and do it all over again. So if you're lucky, that's all milking is. Back and forth, hang them under, kick them out, hang them under, kick them out, hang them under, kick them out, hang them under. But stuff can always go wrong. And that's what you gotta be on the lookout for. Maybe a cow is sick, maybe a cow is limping. 
Maybe something happens to your milking equipment. Maybe you run out of iodine for the post dip. You gotta go change the barrel. Maybe an air hose gets loose and starts leaking air. You never know, there's a million things that can go wrong. There's a lot of moving parts here. Cows and equipment. So you just always need to be watching, making sure everything's going good. Case in point, this milker right here, when we take it off, it's spraying a little bit of liquid out of the pulsation line. It'll back flush here and then you'll be able to see it. Right there. And if you know anything about a milking system, that is wrong on multiple levels. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut a centimeter off of this line and then we're gonna go down into the basement, make sure all the liquid is cleared out of that line and then come back up here and find out what is wrong with this milking unit. Put this back on here. I did an excellent job of cutting those all straight. Doesn't matter too much. Well, all of those little nozzles were lined up properly. I'm now guessing that something in this block is broken. Oops. Probably doesn't make any sense. investigating. We're in the basement now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I pull this line off, I think there's gonna be a bunch of liquid in here. Not a bunch. Definitely some though. And uh, it's a vacuum line, so there's supposed to be zero in there. That's uh, no bueno. We're pretty much done milking. We got the last line in there right now. So we're gonna start going into wash mode. First thing we do is put those milkers on the wash trays. Last thing we're gonna do is push up the feed in our pack barn. We don't have a robotic feed pusher for this barn yet. Probably never will come. So we just do it with skid steer. We uh, consider that manually pushing up the feed. I'll always remember as a kid, dad would always uh, pitchfork the feed in the freestall barn, like pushing it up by hand. There's probably, probably five tons of feed a couple times a day. Oops, spit them on with a pitchfork. Crazy. 